Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be another Ram video. I know we haven't done a lot with the truck here lately. Um, after we did the headlights and tail lights and the mirror covers, door covers, all of that, we haven't done a whole lot with it. But it is winter here in West Virginia. It's freaking cold and my truck didn't come with a factory remote start. So I picked up this Flash Logic unit that everybody on the 4th Gen Ram Facebook group told me to get. It's the FLRS CH10 fits, I think, like all Chrysler Dodges and everything. 2011 up that it has like tip start uh, it's the key that's not really a key but it just kind of sticks in that thing anyway this comes with i think you have one two three four five six connections and you have optional wiring you can splice for the horn the door sensor and the hood which are not needed i just want the remote start feature so that's all we're going to be doing this is not going to be a how-to video i'm just going to take you along while i'm doing this i will link an awesome how-to video on this down in the description below it's kind of what i went by and i'll show you kind of like i said it's the video that I'm going to be going by um, so I'll link it give him credit for this hopefully we can get this thing installed and get it programmed because that was the biggest thing I was worried about was doing this myself was the programming but luckily this kit off eBay was like $148 it came with a programming cable and everything so I should have everything that we need so let's go ahead and get started so if you forgot what the truck looks like like I said it is a 2015 quad cab Ram it is the Express it is not very upgraded so we've been upgrading it as we go overlook this it has been rainy snowy and muddy here in west virginia but the first thing we need to do is remove this panel there are two bolts down here and it should pop off all right so after you take off the two phillips bolts that look like this you will just pull this out and then kind of up and it will release those tabs and that's what it looks like on the back. What we're going to be concentrating on is the OBD2 port because we do have to remove it and piggyback our first connection into it. So just a word to disconnect this, it has two little spring clips here and on the other side, push it in uh, with a screwdriver on one side, finger on the other, and it will pull straight out from your little holder. So to replace that OBD2, you're not really replacing it, you're just kind of jumping it. DS3 is going to plug into your old OBD2 port. DS4 is going to become your new OBD2 port. Replaces just like the other one. So you'll just piggyback VS3 into your OBD2, VS4 back into your holder. So after you get those connected, the white piece will go into your holder. VS3 plugs in the OBD2. So the next thing we will need to do is move over to the ignition switch and the ignition switch harness that plugs in right here. So again on this one, you have two little spring clips on the side. Just push in and this will release. So the next thing we're going to piggyback into is that connector. So after you get the ignition switch unplugged, we're going to use VS1 and VS2. VS1 is going to plug into your ignition switch cable. VS2 is actually going to plug into the back of the ignition switch. So basically you're going to jump this wire into this one and this will connect your module to your ignition switch. So after you have VS1 and VS2 plugged in, uh, looking back we have VS3 and VS4. VS4 replaced your OBD port. So now we have to move on to our headlight switch and to get into there we need to remove this side cover so the side cover has five push tabs just take you a trim removal tool stick it in there pry it out and all five of them will pop out so really what you need to do for this one you're actually going to reach behind it and pop this whole thing out because it's almost impossible to get to from behind all right so after your headlight switch is just popped out like i said it literally just pushes out all it has is these little springs holding it in you're going to unplug the back of it and we're going to piggyback it into the harness so for this we're going to be using vs7 and vs8 vs8 will plug into your factory headlight switch plug and vs7 will actually plug into the back of the headlight switch just make sure you pull the headlight switch to the side that way you're not trying to plug it in out here and then obviously the headlight switch isn't going to be going back in there i say that because that's exactly what i just did so um don't be like me and actually route the wire the correct way so after you get that done you can reinstall your headlight switch and you can reinstall your side cover just kind of clips around the corner and folds in we should be getting close to being able to plug in our actual actual module so at this point we're ready to install the actual box they do make note whenever you're getting ready to uh, connect the harness uh, connect the black plug first then the blue connector and then when disconnecting it do it in reverse order you want to do the blue connector then the black connector so this is what the box will look like when you have it installed it's ms2 and the ads harness basically is what that equals out to so basically everything is connected now so we should be able to start the actual programming of the module inside the truck so for this we're going to follow flash logics module programming instructions it is 20 different steps so the first thing we need to do is close the driver door then reopen it to wake up the bus connector all right so we need to open the door that reactivate us the bus system then we need to hit unlock and look for the green led 
which we've got. So now we can turn the key to the on position. It'll turn solid red, which we do have. Turn the key back off. Remove the key. Insert the key again. Turn it on. LED will flash green, which it is doing. Turn it off and disconnect the power. So like I said, to disconnect it, disconnect the blue adapter and then the black connector. So now this is actually where we go into the house and do the programming. Check the link below. He does a great job of showing you how to program this. I don't have a screen capture program on my computer. So I'm going to let him take that part. So like I said, click the link in the description below. Give him a like, give him a subscribe because he is the one that showed me how to do this. So I can show you guys how to do it. Two hours later. All right, guys, as you can see, it is actually dark now. It took me like two and a half hours to get this thing programmed. When I say your computer needs to be completely updated, it needs to be completely updated. Make sure that Windows Update has no new updates. Make sure you get the .NET framework installed. Make sure everything that is on that paper gets installed on that computer. You're going to run into problems like I did. I believe that was just complete user error. Uh, the company was really, really good. Uh, they remote controlled my desktop, kind of told me what to do, and I did. Works completely fine. Like I said, I did not install the wire that goes to the hood, the door, or whatever the other one was, but I did uh, install the T-harness, which is really all you have to do. And of course, you can actually turn off the truck as well. Another three clicks of the unlock button, or the lock button on your uh, factory key will do the trick. So it is freezing out here now because it is so late. So I'm gonna end this here. Hopefully you like this kind of how-to video, but not really a how-to video, but I kind of showed you how to do it. Anyway, after you program it on the computer, it's a simple plug in the harness, turn it on, let the green light come on, turn it off, turn it to start, turn it back off, module is programmed. So like I said, I'm gonna link a really good how-to video in the description below, but hopefully you kind of enjoyed my journey of getting this installed. So if you don't care, drop a big fat like on this video. Apparently it helps these videos get seen. Apparently it helps the channel gets seen. If you want to check out everything I'm doing, most stuff that don't kind of make it to YouTube, head over to my Instagram. I post there pretty regularly and it's also the easiest way to get a hold of me if you have any direct questions. Of course, you can always leave a comment below. I try to answer them all. And of course, please hit that big red subscribe button below. Almost the 4,000. I would love to hit it before New Year's. I think we're like 150 away now. Uh, so yeah, if you could help me out, it'd be greatly appreciated. So guys, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed this, but I'll see you guys on the next video.